So this is just some tap water that I put some dish soap into, just, a, just about a drop of dish soap. Now I'm gonna use the straw to blow some bubbles into this uh, solution. And there, maybe you can see some interesting colors starting to appear. Well, aloha, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about thin film interference. So you've probably seen thin film interference happen in a couple of places. The two most common places that, that you naturally find thin film interference occurring are going to be in soap bubbles, And uh, often you find it happening in oil slicks. So here's what thin film interference is going to look like. If you've ever looked at soap bubble, bubbles or oil slicks, you'll sort of see this almost iridescent set of colors to them that are constantly changing and swirling and moving around. And that is because of the thickness of the layer of either water in a soap bubble or the oil slick, um, the thickness of the oil slick as it floats on top of the water. And so because of that, there are some very interesting optical properties that happen. And um, this can actually be used. Um, if you've ever gotten glasses with anti-reflective coating on them, that's something that uses thin film interference as well. Um, there are some other optical things that use thin film interference, um, camera lenses, for instance, um, certain telescopes, um, they, they all incorporate thin film interference. Sometimes even you've seen things, um, if you've ever seen some silverware or sometimes you see knives that are, that are kind of have this iridescent shiny color to them, uh, often they're coated in a very thin layer of some material and that's what gives them that iridescent color. It's, um, it's the thin film interference happening. So here's the idea of thin film interference. It's actually based on reflection. So let's think about, let's start with an oil slick. So let's imagine that we have a layer of air up here. Then underneath that, we have a layer of oil. And then underneath that, we have a layer of water. So if you've ever seen a drip of oil in a parking lot after it rains, this is kind of what happens. The oil floats on top of the water and we get, we get a thin layer of oil here. And if you look at it, you see different colors. And the reason for that is because of interference. Here's what's happening. There's actually um, several, well, there's actually a uh, array of light that is, let me see if I can change colors here. Um, so there's a ray of light that's going to come down. Maybe I'll use a ruler. Undo that. Come on. No. There we go. All right, so maybe I'll use a ruler here. And um, so there's a ray of light that's going to come in like this, sort of. Actually, I'm going to come in straight so that we um, don't have to worry about too much geometry and uh, refraction of angles and stuff like that. All right, so we have this ray of light. It comes down here and it hits the oil. Now, most of the light is going to travel into the oil. And if it's at an angle, it's going to refract into the oil. Uh, but it turns out a certain percentage of that light will reflect off the surface of the oil. So some of the light is going to go down into the water or down through the oil like so. Some of the light is going to reflect right here at this interface and it's going to go back up that way. All right, when you hit the water again, some of the light, uh, most of the light in fact, is going to make it into the water. But every time you change from one material to another, some of that light is going to reflect. So some of the light is going to reflect back up and 
out of the um, out of the material. Now, of course, yes, some of that reflected light is going to hit the top of the layer of the oil, and it's going to reflect back down in, and it's going to keep on bouncing around it. And, uh, but each time, we're only talking about 2% reflection. So it turns out if you have two, uh, a single reflection, that's uh, maybe 2% of the light reflecting. If you have two reflections, now you're 2% of 2%, and it's so small, it's, it's negligible. Now this diagram is um, kind of hard to understand because everything's on top of itself. We can't really tell which way light is going anywhere because it's, it's going two ways in a lot of the places. So here's what's happening. Um, I'm going to draw this off axis a little bit and uh, it's going to help us see which rays of light are which. So what's gonna happen here? We have a ray of light coming in like so some of the light is going to go down into the water. And some of the light is going to reflect off of the surface of the oil. Now, when we have this interface between the oil and the water, again, some of the light is going to go down. Most of it, in fact, goes down into the water. But some of the light is going to, re um, is going to come back out this way. And yeah, of course, there's another reflection here, but that one's so small that it's virtually not worth mentioning. So it's basically these two reflections that are important. Now remember, these two reflections are not um, where, where they look like they're physically separated. They're actually right on top of each other over here. So because they're right on top of each other, they are going to interfere with each other. And the amount of interference is going to be based on how thick this oil is. Because as the light travels through this layer of oil, it's going to become out of phase with the original wave. If those two waves, waves are out of phase, they might interfere constructively or they might interfere destructively. So you can see here, that the light that's traveling here is going to go down through here and then back up that way. So it travels a total distance. The, the light ray that travels in the oil, if we call this distance T, it's going to travel two times the thickness of the oil, once going down and once coming back up, which means these two rays of light have a path length difference. They have a difference in the amount of distance they have traveled. So delta L, you might remember this from uh, the interference video, delta L is equal to 2T. And that has to be equal to, if we want constructive interference, it's got to be equal to M lambda. And if we want destructive interference, it's got to be delta L is equal to 2T is equal to M plus a half times lambda. So the half integer multiples will cause destructive interference, and the integer multiples will cause constructive interference. When you see a color coming off of this that looks fairly bright, that means that you are seeing constructive interference of that wavelength. And so um, there's, a, there's a table of wavelengths that I've given you, I've provided for you, and that table of wavelengths will tell you what color each wavelength is or what color range each wavelength is. So um, pick something in the middle if you're looking for it, if it's not given specifically. If it just says it looks red, pick something in the red range. Okay. So if you have this much, let's say that you're looking over here and you realize, um, I don't know, you see something red. And maybe you realize that lambda for that color is equal to 650 nanometers. Well, we need to be careful because there's one other thing that's happening here. And that is this extra distance is happening inside the oil which means that even though the frequency stays the same, because the speed of light changes in that material, the wavelength is also going to be different. So this wavelength would be in a vacuum. 
or often in air because it's so close it doesn't matter. But if you're in an actual material, you're going to need to take that into account. The wavelength in a material is equal to the wavelength in a vacuum divided by the index of refraction for that material. So remember, when we're applying these equations, the lambda there is not lambda in a vacuum or lambda in air, which is what most tables provide. It's going to be the, in, uh, the lambda in the material. So you need to divide by the index of refraction. So let's see an example here. If you see that this is happening, and you look up here and you see red, and you realize that's a kind of a reddish color. Actually, you probably see it kind of pinkish, but um, you, see, you see a red color coming off of that. If that's the case, maybe you find that lambda was, uh, as I said before, 650 nanometers. If you have this 650 nanometers, the first thing we need to do is, and uh, we want to know how thick is the oil. Minimum. What's the minimum thickness of this oil? So in order to find that, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to use these equations. But the first thing I need to do is figure out the lambda for the material in oil. And I haven't given you an index of refraction of this oil yet. Let's say the index of refraction is 1. I don't know, 25, let's call it. So the index of refraction of this oil is 1.25. So how thick is the oil in its index of refraction? Uh, so lambda in oil is equal to lambda in a vacuum divided by N. That's equal to 650 nanometers divided by N is 1.25. This is equal to, grab my calculator, 650 divided by 1.25. It's 520. 520 nanometers. Okay, now that I know that, I can look for the thickness of the oil. Because I know that we are seeing bright red, so this has got to be constructive interference. So 2t is equal to m lambda. 2t equals m lambda. Since it says it wants the minimum thickness here, you can see that thickness is related to m directly proportional. So obviously, zero would work, but we know that the oil is more than zero, right? So um, the next biggest thickness that would work would be one. So that's got to be the minimum thickness. We're going to plug in one for m. And I'm going to solve this for t. t is equal to m lambda over 2. m is going to turn into a 1, so we don't care about that. And lambda here, remember, this lambda is the lambda in the material. So this has got to be 520 nanometers divided by 2. This is equal to, well, 520 divided by 2 is going to be 260 nanometers. Or I guess you could write it as uh, 2.6 times 10 to the negative 7, if you really want to, meters. So that means the thickness of this oil layer has to be 260 nanometers. So when you see a bubble, it's a little bit different because in a bubble, you still have a thin film, but it's going to be air, and then water, mostly, and then air again. And when you look at this bubble, okay, yeah, you still have the same T for thickness here. And you still have a lot of the same things going on. The light is still going to be reflecting in the same way. It's going to come down here. Some of it reflects. Some of it goes through. Some of it reflects. Some of it goes through. And these two rays are what end up interfering with each other. But there's one catch to this. And that is, when you go from a lower density material to a higher density material, there is a phase reversal. Here's what I mean by that. 
If I attach the end of the slinky to this door and then make a wave that goes upward, you can see that the reflection is always in the opposite direction. It goes upward traveling that way and downward traveling back this way. On the other hand, if I let the other end of the slinky hang free, then there is no reflection at the bottom. Watch carefully. So the same thing is true for refraction. When light goes from less dense to more dense objects, it's going to reverse its phase. So that means that there is a phase flip of this ray because it's going from air, it's reflecting off the water. And so that ray is going to be flipped around by lambda over 2. Lambda over 2. However, down here at the, uh, wait, water to water, no, water back to air. What was I thinking? All right, down here at this, at this intersection, on the other hand, it does not flip. Now, if you notice, uh, if you remember why I did not mention this when we were talking about oil, it's because this happens twice. So there's a phase flip here, there's also a phase flip here, because going from air to oil and then oil to water, we have two phase reversals. So those two phase reversals end up being a full phase and, and they end up being in phase. And so no problem, both of them had the same thing happening. But in the case of a air bubble, an air bubble, um, there's only one phase reversal. There is not a phase reversal down here. No reversal. So because of that, we need to take into account the fact that one of these is off by lambda over 2. So when we write our equation, t, uh, 2t equals m lambda, we need to take into account that there's also this plus lambda over 2 that we need to be careful of. So in this case, if we saw red again, let's say lambda is equal to 650 nanometers. Let's say that the water, uh, we know the index of refraction of water is 1.33. If I could write 0.33. And um, I want to know how thick this layer of water is. So I'm going to solve this for t. So t is equal to m lambda plus lambda over 2 uh, divided by 2, all divided by 2. Okay, so t is going to be equal to, I could factor a lambda out of this, that'll make it a little bit easier, so it's lambda times m plus a half, all over 2. This is equal to lambda, oh, don't forget, lambda is in the material, it's not in the uh, vacuum. So because of that, I need to figure out what lambda in the water is. Lambda is equal to, so lambda for water is equal to lambda in a vacuum divided by the index of refraction. This is equal to 650 nanometers divided by 1.33, which is equal to 650 divided by 1.33 is... 488.722, let's call it, 488.722 nanometers. Okay, now that I have that, I can plug that in. 488.722 nanometers times m. Well, assuming it's the smallest it can be, um, turns out in this case that could be a zero because we'd still have a half. So this is going to be zero plus one half divided by two. And you can see that this is going to just be, um, so it's times a half and then divided by two, which is the same as dividing by four. So if I divide the wavelength by four, I get T is equal to 122.180 nanometers. Or maybe you could write it as 1.222, let's call it, times 10 to the negative seventh meters. Either of those answers would be acceptable. So that's really all there is to it for thin film interference. Mahalo for watching, and see you next time.